Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. I'm sure you've been able to see from the title that today we're going to be talking about the diplomatic immunity and unfortunately the woman, wife of apparently a diplomat that's not a diplomat, that's apparently a spy but technically isn't a spy because he's technically a electrical engineer that's apparently working. It, it just gets interesting. It just gets interesting. So we're going to find out what diplomatic immunity actually means and how it goes. We've got the actual paperwork behind that as well. Find out what he actually is because he's not actually a diplomat. So that's always good. And actually find out what's going on and have a discussion. Because unfortunately we're not going to change anything. But I do think that there needs to be change in this. I really do think this. So without further adieu let's get into this video and then we'll we can start off right welcome back First of all, we're going to find out what diplomatic immunity actually means today for us in what we're discussing today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to the v Vienna Convention of Diplomatic Conventions, which is what is being used as the forefront and, you know, the foundations of what the diplomatic immunity actually means. We're actually going to go straight into Article 31, which basically goes into a diplomatic agent shall enjoy immunity from the criminal jurisdiction of the receiving state. In other words, somebody that comes from a different country or a different state that comes to the UK that is working in around London or given Pacific deals in this case will receive complete and utter diplomatic immunity, which is from criminal jurisdiction and is also from civil and administrative jurisdiction but we're also going to move on to article 37 as well very very quickly because article 37 is what we're really interested in and we're going to look at subsection one the members of the family of a diplomatic agent forming part of his household shall, if they are not nationals of the receiving state, enjoy the privileges and immunities specified from Articles 29 to 36. Obviously, Article 31 falls in that parameter, which means that, unfortunately, Anne is actually technically, completely and utterly diplomatically immune from any sort of form of criminality in this instance due to this diplomatic immunity. So I'm sure that a lot of people know who Anne Suclas is but do they have any idea who John Suclas is? Who is the diplomat in this occasion? The electric engineer that somehow is a spy from the US? So let's actually find out a little bit more about Jonathan, shall we? So, Jonathan Sacklass is a US diplomat and an alleged NSA spy. He's not actually a diplomat, he is trading information, but I suppose you could call that technically. He was born in Oregon and attended South Salem High School before studying electrical engineering at University of Southern California. He was employed by the Defense Department when he married in 2003. He is married to Anna Siklas. And unfortunately, she killed Harry Dunn by driving on the wrong side of the road while exiting the RAF base in question and driving straight into the oncoming Harry, unfortunately. So, let's find out why they have diplomatic immunity in this instance because usually it only applies for people that are in London. So Anne 
who is able to claim diplomatic immunity after a special deal was part in place between the UK and the US which gives staff and their families based at RAF Crowton diplomatic immunity. Usually diplomatic immunity only covers those diplomats and their dependents based in London. The special arrangement has been in place as early as 1994 for this particular base. A lawyer acting as a spokesperson for the family of Harry Dunn told the Mail on Sunday that Jonathan, who was allegedly purported to be a diplomat, was a senior spy based in the UK. He said he was working out Crowton, which is a communication base, so he was working with intelligence, which is, I guess, why it has been handled in the way it has. In other words, to put my own personal little spin on it, seems to be that it's a cover-up. Let's be honest on that aspect of it. So, let's quickly recap what we know. Article 31 from the Vienna paperwork basically states that they are, anybody that's classified as a diplomatic, uh, or a diplomat, sorry, is now completely and utterly immune from the criminality jurisdiction, is completely removed from civil and all that sort of stuff. And by proxy and extension, so are their loved ones and any staffers that they also have on as well. Though it gets a bit weird when it comes to the staffers, they're not allowed as much as you know people that are not actually part of that, but are just family. So they do have diplomatic immunity in this instance unfortunately, in my opinion. So, there's no question that they do have the diplomatic immunity. The question then comes, at least for me in this, is why is it that you are allowed diplomatic immunity when it comes to the place of, let's say, just one particular crime which comes to the judiciary, killing somebody, unlawfully or lawfully, as in, you know, just generally accidental murder, mowing down, running people over how that doesn't waive diplomatic immunity for killing somebody. Don't get me wrong, generally that would be the procedure that you would, the country would waive the diplomatic immunity, but it would only be accepted if the country actually waives the diplomatic immunity for them to then be tried in, you know, the offending country. Though generally it does seem that most diplomats that have ever done anything to have their diplomatic immunity stripped don't generally get tried in the country they committed the crime in. They normally get tried in the country in which they come from or are representing. So I'm quite annoyed at this, to be honest. I, I don't see why they should get diplomatic immunity for killing somebody. Whether you think that it was a case of it being an accidental killing or murder or accidental death or whether it was an actual murder and preempted and blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't matter. The fact is that Anne took somebody's life away and she has the diplomatic immunity to be decided upon by America whether or not that she will have any sort of form of jurisdiction against her, justice against her, for being tried for her crime. This is all now put onto the aspect of the US. The US is now going to be the one who decides whether or not Ansukas actually comes across and actually has to be tried and actually has any sort of form of recompense for driving at somebody. Whether it was accidental or not i think it was just a case personally if i put my two cents in that being american she drives on the opposite side of the road and forgot that she wasn't in america and she was in the uk and i think it was a misunderstanding but at the same time she still needs to be tried for killing somebody it second degree or whatever degree murder if from the u.s point of view but it still is that way and she needs to be tried for it this at this minute in time doesn't seem to be going that way. And everybody keeps on asking the US to be able to do this, to be able to give or waive the diplomatic immunity away, so to speak. And I don't think it's going to happen. So the conversation that I want to have with you guys about this is simply, should all diplomats 
get immunity, but only up to a certain level. There are certain crimes that they don't get immunity from. As in rape, as in death, killing somebody, those types of things. Maybe some type of fraud, that type of stuff. I, I think that that should be a levy. There should be a cap on what you're immune from. You can't just go into a country and just have complete and utter immunity from that country to then go back to your own country and have them decide whether or not they want to have you tried for the crimes that you've committed in a different country because it can just get swept under the rug and she Anne, may never actually have a trial to be held accountable for killing a 19 year old that had nothing to do with her that was just driving home from work and this diplomatic immunity has no cap it is literally at the point of deciding whether or not the American White House presidency decides that she no longer has it. There is nothing that the UK can do apart from beg and plead to have her immunity waived so she can be tried in this country or even somehow tried in their country for it. But somehow... I don't see that that's going to happen. I think it's very, very important that we have that conversation. I think it's very, very important that we have that conversation. Um, I haven't asked this person, but I was going to do it in a video to see if he would be interested in this. But I would love to have a talk with Don from Two Plebs um, about this to see what he thinks about the diplomatic community and what would be a good idea, What if there should be caps in his opinion, what shouldn't be, and, and that type of argumentation or, you know, discussion in general. I think that that would be very, very interesting to be able to have that conversation with. Because uh, I'd, I'd be very interested in finding out what Americans actually think of this. Should she be immune from having this trial, having her justice, you know, done having a trial done to be proven if she did do this or didn't do this you know have have her day in court so to speak and the other family the dumb family as well whether they should have their day in court so they can look at justice why is it that she who wasn't even a diplomat as well get away with that and have immunity for that why why does that come across I do understand why immunity in itself does happen to do with the Cold War so that charges cannot be levied to the diplomats from the occupying country so they can't just be held there for no reason. But I do think that it should now be revoked or should be changed or reviewed at least and there should be caps on that. We should have caps that if murder is committed whether it be first or second degree for Americans or intent or non-intent then it should still be tried. Same as maybe a couple of other crimes, but predominantly focusing, hyper-focusing on the fact of murder. She killed somebody and she's going to get away with it, so to speak. Don't get me wrong, the whole of the UK know what she's done. It's been reported in the newspapers everywhere because of her diplomatic immunity. If I was going to be honest, I don't think that they would be able to try the case now anyway, apart from with impartial jurors. But I think that that's why the conversation needs to happen. I don't think it's a case of diplomats should be completely immune from murder. By immune, I don't mean that they get away with it completely or it's just completely away. I'm not trying to lead you down a rabbit hole of saying, oh, they can do anything they want. No, the country that they are staying in, so the US diplomats come into the UK, if they were to do anything in the UK, the UK has to ask the US for them to have their diplomatic immunity waived and then that they can go forward. But the US has to agree to that first. That in itself is problematic to use one of the less words on that one. And I, I do actually mean that, that it is very problematic that you do have a instance of somebody running somebody over and a death occurring and 
them leaving and fleeing the country. And until the US decides or doesn't decide what action to take, nothing can happen from the UK's point of view. That family will never get justice. That family will never have that recognition that she did do that and have punishment for that to happen. Anyway, I think that, that should be the end of this video. I, I do think that pointing out the fact that they do have diplomatic immunity, it is a case of under the law that we have now, that any diplomat or people that have diplomatic status are almost exempt from any law of the UK from visiting nations. So anybody that comes to visit on a diplomatic mission is then completely immune for almost any action. I think that that should change. What do you guys think? Do you think that that should change or should it not? Well, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. And I will speak to you all again real soon. Goodbye for now. Take care.